Welcome to Edison Open Forum Cannabinoids 2021. My name is Vivian Parry. Now, legalization, increasing acceptance and demand for both pharmaceutical and consumer products mean the cannabinoid industry is booming. By 2026, the global market is estimated to be worth $60 billion, but biosynthesis could take it to new heights. Edison Open Forum asked the brightest minds in CBD what they think the impact of biosynthesis will be and what's next for their sector. With me is Andrew Mayle of the Love Hemp Group. Welcome, Andrew. Thanks for having me, Vivian. Now, Andrew, the Love Hemp Group is very firmly fo uh, focused on the consumer. Tell me a bit about the group and what its mission is. Absolutely. So the, the company has been trading for approximately six years now, and it was originally founded by a couple of gentlemen in South London who basically developed this company off of uh, off the back of one of their one of their father actually falling quite ill from from cancer and they was looking for alternate uh, alternate treatment uh, they they came across CBD and uh, and the ability to use that to assist uh, in the in the care and, and, and longevity of life and um, and off the back of that they realized there was a bit of an industry here and so they built this company off the back of, of that original premise. And over the over those couple of years, the first couple of years, they actually built quite a quite an online presence with the company. It grew considerably. And one of the things that they found along the way was the testimonials of the clients and the customers that they were selling products to online were, was quite uh, was quite quite dramatic. They were getting great responses. In October 2019, uh, we as a as a PLC as a listed company um, came in and made a proposal to acquire them. Uh, in whole, and we acquired that company, and we renamed it and vertically aligned it as the Love Hemp Group PLC, with the brand uh, name of the product being Love Hemp. So the company has been trading in total for approximately six years now, um, two years under under us as a PLC. You've talked about the testimonials of patients being very important in driving up acceptance, but. What else is driving the spectacular rise of this market? I think people are becoming more and more aware of what they can do with CBD and the benefits that it has to, to you as a, as, a, as, a, as a person, all the way from uh, you know, assistance in, in insomnia through to anxiety, and also uh, you know, an, an area that's very dear to our hearts, which is sport recovery as well. Um, you know, joint pain and, and inflammation, things of that nature. So it's been an area that um, that's really kind of expanded and pe expanded dramatically. And people, the consumer at large is, has really tried to find alternate um, alternate remedies for, for themselves, which are not effectively chemically driven constantly. So this is as a natural substance, is a, a very effective and useful uh, a compound to actually benefit um, benefit you as a human being. And um, where does the brand go? Is it's it's not just online. I think it's also in quite a number of retailers too. It is, yeah. So the the company, um, what we what we what we do have is a a very strong online presence, and um, we are also distributed across a number of uh, retail and high street stores across the UK. Right now, the company is predominantly in in uh, in the UK, and we're looking to expand out into Europe. Southeast Asia and North America in the in the in the next couple of years, uh, that's really going to be the footprint of where we develop from. Um, so we've 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 managed to build quite a presence for ourselves both across the online marketplace, our online marketplace, as well as retail, and um, and that's really been a, an interesting process for us because one one it's something where when people come online and they purchase the product from us, we get to actually uh, manage the customer journey. And we've made a number of investments from a marketing perspective of late over the past six months, which are really going to begin to uh, hopefully um, gain greater exposure for, for the consumer and show the consumer more uh, aspects of what this product can do and give us a wider array of, of access to a marketplace, a consumer marketplace. And how do you link the research or what's, you know, you're seeing um, in uh, the developments in uh, the cannabinoid uh, industry. How do you link that to the consumer product um, in the development of new products in particular? 
So within our within our company, Love Hemp, we do have a a product development team that um, that have been working with various different uh, aspects of the business, aspects of products. Um, but right now, up until now, the the product has mainly been uh, something that it's it's you know a, a tincture or a, a capsule or a body salve, something of this nature. So we've we've you know we we're able to to produce that product in in South London at our facilities. We're able to export that into 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 Europe and and Asia, and um, that's really where where we've focused our energy at this stage of the game. The the next phases of the product development are going to be the exciting ones where, um, you know, we, we begin to look at uh, utilizing the CBD product, the CBD uh, spectrum, broad spectrum into uh, things like uh, a, a cosmetic line or, uh, you know, a, a different food product, for example. Obviously, a lot of these things are driven by Novel Foods Act here in the UK and in other jurisdictions. but. The, that's where that's where some of the excitement in the industry is really going for going to. Now we're seeing, as I said, an explosion of interest in this area, but we're also seeing a lot of hype. I mean, you know, when you look at CBD dog biscuits, I mean, people may swear by CBD dog biscuits, but or CBD infused pants, which is one thing I've seen. I mean, clearly there is some hype. How is the market going to settle down, do you think? Well, just, you know, in reference to the CBD dog biscuits, it's an interesting sector of the business because uh, a lot <laughs> of our- It's not time with dog biscuits are a big thing. <laughs> yeah, well, a lot, of our, a lot of our pets suffer from inflammation and rheumatoid arthritis, just like we do as human beings. So it's an interesting area that, uh, that CBD can actually assist our pets in. But, um, but that, you know, that said, there is hype around the industry at this stage of the game. And I think really what it comes down to is people beginning to learn and experiment with the product themselves and learn what's right for them and understand what the right dosages are. Uh, you know, we, we as a, at, a product, at a product line perspective, we have a number of different um, uh, potencies, uh, uh, you know, percentages or milligrams per, per, um, uh, per product. And, and it really comes down to you understanding what you need from a human perspective, from your body perspective, how your body reacts to it. A little bit of trial and error, obviously, um, but it's, you know, being a natural product, it's a, it's a, it's a fairly simple, simple approach that you can begin to experiment with. Now, how do you go about sourcing your raw ingredients? So we as a company, we've made a, um, a decision from very, very early, early days because of the regulations around it from a novel foods perspective. Uh, we made a decision that really we wanted to to source some of the most pure products, some of the best product on the marketplace. We built a number of peer relationships with a couple of suppliers out of the United States, um, and suppliers that that had already made applications and had already successfully imported product into the UK. And uh, and off the back of that, what we'll, what we did was we effectively worked with those suppliers to say this is what we need as a manufacturer of a retail product in the UK. This is what we need, what our customers want, what our customers need. And so we worked with those, those suppliers and we ended up with a very, very uh, pure product that we're incredibly happy with. Um, the chain of command of that product and the, and the, the, the um, continued authenticity of that product, uh, how it comes to us has all been tested, double batch tested. And then when it comes into the UK and we actually take that extract, that, that crude product and we actually uh, put it into our into our um, our standalone products our our our, our uh, uh, various different vials of tinctures and, and body salts and capsules um, we also batch test it as well so when, when whenever we have a, a, a product line go out that gets delivered um, we've that that product's been tested three and four times over it's one of those things that we just feel that we need to do just to ensure that the marketplace is comfortable with our product. And if we if we ever had a problem, we'd be able to source right back to where it came from and we'd know what the results were. So is that product outdoor grown or is it grown in glass houses? Combination of both, actually. Originally it was it was grown outdoors and uh, and then in subsequent years it was grown indoors. Um, we don't particularly have a say with regards to how the manufacturer uh, produces the product or, or cultivates the product. Um, you know, we're very much on the on the last mile of that. But 
uh, you know, in, in working with in working with the suppliers that are uh, the credible suppliers, the ones that you know uh, are, are taking this at a very very professional level. Um, they know what's best for for cultivation, depending on the geographic that they're in, the latitude where they are in the countries that they're producing in, things of that nature, climate, temperature, uh, water table, a uh, number of factors like this. Now we're coming up to COP26. There's a lot of focus on sustainability, and there are concerns that you know glasshouse production is is not sustainable. So does the advent of biosynthesis really excite you in terms of what it might mean for your supply chain? Or do you think that consumers would prefer to have the product from a plant, a whole plant, rather than from uh, an ex just an extraction from a, from a yeast? So from our perspective, again, you know, we're looking at the last mile of that. But I think that, you know, as the consumer becomes more aware of the, of the, the full chain of custody and the, and the chain of cultivation here, I think that the co consumer will become more interested in where that product comes from and, and how it is cultivated. The, you know, it, it really comes down to a number of factors in that process. I think the, the consumer initially really needs to become educated across the product. I think the, the, the premise of the sustainability of the product is ever so important at, at every level, but it really is just scratching the surface at this point in time. As you mentioned, the scope and the size of this marketplace is growing dramatically and it's projected to be massive. I think that there will be a point in time when that sustainability component really becomes effective with those cultivation companies and the, and the people who are, who are uh, cultivating and extracting the crude oils. Uh, and I think then they're, they're gonna be the ones who have to make those decisions with regards to what, what, what their best practices are. From our perspective, we're always looking for the best practices from our, our suppliers and we're really concerned about that. But to the extent of us actually you know, invoking a, a, a mandate to them at this point in time, I'm not sure that we're quite there yet. I think it's something that we'll certainly develop into over the next year, two years. Now, you're chairman of the Love Hemp uh, Group, and so that definitely puts you in um, the, the, the box that we have uh, with a label on it that says brightest minds in the CBD. So what I wanted to ask you particularly was, what do you think the future of this sector is? I mean, we've said it's growing massively, but how do you think that it's going to develop uh, over the next uh, five years? Where do you think that it will it will go? I think the um, the acceptance of the product, first of all, and the destigmatization of what it actually is. Um, it's fairly commonplace right now that we'll even hear uh, people asking how much product, how much CBD product do they actually have to ingest? To, to have a, a, a psychotropic reaction or a, a psychedelic reaction to it. And that's, that's a real challenge because, you know, there, there, is, there is no psychotropic component to this. The THC aspect of it, the recreational drug aspect of this uh, product has been completely removed. And, um, and so, you know, the, that, that really is uh, the educational piece. And I think that that's really gonna be the next step that's gonna happen is that, that transition and the acceptance of this product across the marketplace. I think in North America, where the uh, recreational components of the of the cannabis market have, have come into legalization um, at a recreational point of view, as well as medicinal perspective, I think they're, they're a little bit further ahead of the curve from a knowledge perspective. And I think the, the UK and Europe are gonna catch up very, very quickly. Um, I think it really just comes down to creating greater consumer awareness and product awareness and the destigmatization of this particular product and this particular component. And presumably the other bit of this picture is uh, regulation, because really the regulators are a, a bit behind the curve here in terms of regulating this market. Yeah, we um, we're. Uh, we're, we're, you know, very supportive of the Novel Foods Act and what the and what the, the regulatory bodies are trying to do. It, it would certainly be exciting if um, if the regulation and the process could speed up a little bit as well, uh, because I think that that would help in in creating a greater education piece. From a love hemp perspective, one of the things that we 
uh, strive to do is educate. And, and in all the focus groups that we've done and all the consumer reaction that we've had, um, you know, we, we really encourage people to ask us questions. Obviously, we're, we're not in a position where we can make a recommendation like a doctor or anything like that, but we're, we're certainly able to provide people with, uh, you know, a, a knowledge base and, and what other consumers have used and how, how the product should be or could be considered for use. And, and I think that that's a really, really strong aspect of it, being able to educate what, what this actually is and how the product can be used is a key factor going forward. And this is actually something that you can see across the medicinal part market here in the UK because a medicinal from a, from a, 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 a doctor prescription perspective, it's really just starting to expand rapidly now. And there's some great momentum in that aspect of the business, not an area that we're involved in, but you know, we certainly look over the fence to look in and see what they're what's going on in that aspect of the business in that sector. So to conclude, um, how would you make uh, your pitch uh, for the Love Hemp Group uh, to a potential investor? You know, what are your prospects over the next few years? You know, partnerships that you have in mind, and new product ranges, and so on. So this has been a transformational year for us. Uh, the last eight, nine months has been a very um, uh, busy period of time. We've made a couple of very large investments into, into, into our marketing strategy. Um, we've created a, a, a category exclusive partnership with the United, sorry, the UFC, uh, Ultimate Fighting Championship. We've also uh, taken on Anthony Joshua as a spokesperson and an investor in the company. Obviously, um, uh, because he's not unknown, Anthony Joshua. <laughs> <laughs> we hope not. Um, so we're we're really excited about those those investments that we've made in that marketing strategy. But really, what it comes down to is again, it, it's that creating that awareness. And what our intention is to utilize both of those properties, as well as more yet to come, uh, to create a greater awareness and a greater knowledge base for the the, the product through exposure. And from our perspective, Love Hemp Group, we're very, very happy with regards to our position in the UK marketplace right now. Um, uh, we're probably one of the largest uh, CBD companies by reported revenue on an annual basis at this moment in time. But we're expecting that to grow. We anticipate that to grow. But really, our 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 hope is, and our desire is to as uh, that as we expand into Europe and we expand into Asia and North America. That's really where the where the brand is going to going to explode, and and because of those investments that we've made from a marketing perspective, um, you know we're looking to really dramatically build out on that. We've also established a new manufacturing facility in South London, which is going to be ready in the next few months, and uh, we'll be up and running, being able to supply a, a very large array of products from that one location. And so, it's really it's really a, an exciting time for us as a company. And, Investors, you know, can watch and, and see through our our news releases and the and the and the trajectory of the company over the past eight months or so, um, all of the movement that we've made, and, and hopefully follow the story and, and you know follow where we're going. And we try to we try to we try to tell a story through those through those news releases and, and make a make a, uh, a logical a logical set of steps going forward. We've also we've also announced that we're looking to do an uplisting onto the onto the London Stock Exchange main market as well, which hopefully will come up fairly shortly. It sounds like very exciting times ahead uh, for the Love Hemp Group. Andrew Mayle, uh, Chairman of the Love Hemp Group, thank you so much for being with us. It's been such a pleasure. Thank you, Vivian. Appreciate your time.